Back to us in five, four, three, two. Welcome back. I'm still in the company of professional foodie Oliver Byrne, whose latest compilation of his ever popular column, The Food Guide to Love, is out this week. And delicious company you are too, Oliver. You must be the right ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me, Oliver, uh, was there a moment in your life you can remember when you first fell in love with food? I wish I could say it was sucking on my ma's knockers for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but I was bottle fed. No, um, it, was, it came later when I was 11. I was with my dad and his mates in uh, Seville in Spain at an Ireland soccer game. And they were merry on the vino and I was very, very bored. And until after the game, we went into this tapas bar and I'd never been near food like it. Fresh sardines in virgin olive oil, tortilla, hot peppers, char-grilled prawns, chorizo and jamon, snails in garlic sauce. They smell like heaven. The waitress showed me how to scoop one out with a toothpick. It was the most sensual feeling I'd had in my life, like a first kiss. From then on, it was always on my mind, and I wanted to do it all the time. Oliver Byrne, best of luck with the book. Thanks, my son. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, stuff me. Oh, yes, I'm your Christmas turkey. Oh. I'm starving. Oh, that's sort of pizza. I won't last that long. You got anything in the fridge? Um, panacottas? And the amaretto ones. Caramel. Oh. Well, I'll bring you one. We've been together for six months and you didn't think of sharing it with me. It's a small bit there. You enough. don't know what commitment is. You only oh, take, you never give. Get, get out, get out, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Buy some more. <laughs> Gee, what? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Get me bastard. And that's my towel. Maxi, give us a break here. You never think of people's feelings. Forgive me. Now you've hurt my feelings. You don't have any! Maxine. Any chance of my clothes? I throw them out the window. Shite. Sorry, but, like, they happen to be my clothes. Why aren't you wearing them? Uh, I had a slight disagreement with my girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. I, I was taking them to charity. Right. Kind of gonna need them back, though. Right. Don't worry, I've seen a penis before. Have you? Great. Didn't want to scare you or anything. I'm Oliver, by the way. Oliver Byrne, the food writer. Uh, your jumbo jacket was sewn by seven-year-old children, Oliver. That's desperate.
Listen, thinking about what you said back there about the poor kids and everything, I'd like you to give them a John Boy jacket to charity. Okay. So, where are you heading? Smithfield. Going the same way. <laughs> and uh, you're Greek, Italian? Spanish. Brilliant. Huge fan. Chorizo, morcilla, bacalao al pil pil. <laughs> now, how'd you like Dublin? Has anyone told you where not to eat? Uh, you, you know what? I, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but, but I'm having problems with my boyfriend, and I'm, I need time to get my thoughts together to, you know, Okay, sure. Close. No problem. Okay. Bye. Maybe I can help. I don't think so. Try me, please. I've just been thrown naked to the street by my ex-girlfriend, so I'm in the zone so to speak, in all issues concerning problems of the heart. Yeah, and you're immediately chatting up the first woman you meet. I can give you the male point of view. I know his point of view. I am Fernando de Sancha, World Authority on Human Rights, whose work she admires, which means I can sleep with her and not tell her I have a wife in Barcelona. What a sly dog. Because you wouldn't do the same? Absolutely not. I'm strictly into serial monogamy. You're Fernando de... Sancha. Whatever, Speedy Gonzalez guys committed first degree infidelity, which is very unfair on you. Come to think of it, it's even more unfair on his poor wife. Are you sure about this? What's 800 euros for a good cause? Are you peckish? There's a, a little Indonesian just up the road that serves amazing banana leaf yours. I'm meeting Fernando. Want to beat him up? I've prepared a speech. Never as effective. He's there. I've gone blank. Okay. Come on. Run it through. Pretend I'm him. You're nothing like him. What's your name? Viviana. Viviana. I am the very unhappy man in my marriage. My wife has a moustache. Her name was Paco before <laughs> the sex change. <laughs> Please, I need to stay I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> this is my serious face. Okay. Fernando? You may be a world authority on human rights and state-sponsored torture. You may have an IQ of 200 and a 12-inch penis. Wow, that's a big IQ. But lying to me and your wife just makes you a small, pathetic coward, a cliche hypocrite pig who I don't want to know anymore. I refuse to blow your ego up anymore. You are a fraud, shit-eater, jerk-hole. That was translating from Spanish, so... It was good. Yeah? Yeah. You could also tell him you think of Keen from Westlife while you're having sex. Westlife? Famous Irish boy band. I once thought of Darren Aronofsky. Film director. Well, that would do it. Okay, I'm going for it. I'll be here. You have to love nothing. Come on down then. Your cattle's getting cold. Where's New Jersey on? I'm not coming to the pub. What do you mean? Don't want to watch the game. The whole bleeding country will be watching it. Like your granny won't. 
Be nigh am not. I hope it rains, Garrison Game. You can snigger all you want, but you're coming to the pub with your dad. Don't like soccer. You don't need to like it. It's about all of us together. Feeling part of something. One of the lads. I'm not one of the lads. Oh, two good for us now, are you? Leave it, Eddie. Go on now, Ollie. As a charity to the nation. Just eat it. It's not proper food. It's good, honest Dublin grub. It's sick, with boiled mickeys in it. You're insulting me and your gran here who taught me how to make it. Why can't you saute it in garlic like those tabas in Spain? Oh, I'll saute your arse. My sauteed arse would taste a whole lot better. Stall the ball there. Have you been at the magazines again? Look under the shirt. Oh! Right, me book. Ella's your age, she'll be reading Carmag and Dorky Mags. This is just gay. That's what this just is. Gay. And you're turning him into a gay lord who won't eat what's on his plate. Open your mouth. Go on now, Ali. It tastes better than it looks. Ah, uh, please. I'm telling you. Open it. I will open it for you. Now chew it. Like a man. Swallow. Oh. Yes, you can. <laughs> what comes out? Goes back in. Just gone 25 minutes to 12 o'clock. Today's weather forecast with rain expected later today, so a dull afternoon in store, I'm afraid. But right now, in studio with me, is food writer Oliver Byrne, whose Sunday Post column, Food Guide to Love, has turned him into Dublin's foremost authority on eating, loving, and having sex. Is the food ever better than the sex, Oliver? Great food, I think, is better than bad sex. Uh, on the other hand, disgusting sex is a lot more enjoyable than disgusting food. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed your, your column this week about dinner dating and our desperate quest to find a soulmate. How was it you put it? Um, trying to find a pea in a hailstorm. Indeed. Written from experience, huh? Sadly, yes. I've calculated that I've been on over 300 dinner dates and still counting. Still haven't found the right person. Well, I keep thinking I've found the right person, but they always turn out to be the wrong person in disguise. I checked a horoscope. Um, Venus is leaving Gemini tomorrow. I'm hoping one day to meet the wrong person who turns out to be the right person in disguise. Which means it's a perfect time for us to move in together. I mean, what? Well, we're going out now six months, so you listening? Just going to the loo. I don't believe it. It's it's Bibiana, right? Are you okay? Here, have a licorice drop. Thank you. I'm sorry. Do we know each other? No, I, I'm Oliver. We met on the street. You picked up my clothes. We rehearsed a speech. I was naked. Hi. <laughs> Aren't you having dinner with someone? Uh, yeah, it's not. She's just my astrologer. Uh, what about you? Isn't that your man, Fernando, with the IQ of 12 and the 200 inch Mickey? I can't believe I was so stupid. I was wondering about that. He told me that day his marriage had ended. I thought he'd be different with me, but men don't change. Oh, well, we do. Uh, but not for the better. <laughs> I knew there was something wrong tonight, so I asked him, um, and he says, yeah. He's been sleeping with one of his first year students. He needs her youth to feed his inner Nabokov. Or some bullshit, but that he still loves me and wants to be with me. You want to rehearse another speech? I want to put a fork in his eye. Viviana, no seas cría, ponte en mi lugar. That, that was to hurt his feelings. If you want, we could go in and fornicate on his table. Um, nice to meet you again. Oliver. Oliver. Talk down from the street.
still hungry? Good. Um, Here's a knuckle sandwich. Oh. What are you doing here? I live right there. Well, that's so weird. They sent me to review that place. You work for Health and Safety? No, I'm the food writer you've never heard of. What happened to your eye? Oh, uh, I got hit by a sandwich. So, how are you feeling? Not good, no. Well, you look like you haven't eaten in days. Yeah, I'm going to buy some milk right now, so. You need comfort food. I'll come with. Oliver, I know I kissed you outside the restaurant, but right now the last thing I want to do is get involved with anyone. Absolutely so... understood. The thought hadn't crossed my mind. Well, it had, but I've suppressed it. OK, then. Great. You know it's not raining. Maybe I pushed him to it, you know? Maybe I expected too much or gave too much. I dropped everything to follow him all the way to Dublin, and I shouldn't have, but I just don't know how to love by halves. So, I mean, either you love someone or you don't. You just keep making the same mistake. I keep falling for these brilliant men who turn out to be bastards. This is really good. Mm. I'm going to try this one. I think it's a father substitute thing. When I was 11, my dad was shot dead by a sniper in Bosnia. Wow. How cool. He was a war correspondent, American. When he died, we moved back to Spain. I just turned into this teenager missing a hero figure, and I guess I'm still looking for him. I wouldn't blame yourself. The fault lies squarely with Ferdinand the Bull. Oh, yeah, I know. I did have to put up with a lot, you know. And sex wasn't that good. No. Viagra not working. No, the reverse. He suffers an orgasmia. I know what. He never reaches an orgasm, no matter how much stimulation he receives. You know, he just went on and on and on. It was really, I mean, I could reach three orgasms and he would still be going. It must have been terrible. It was. <laughs> and then girlfriend number 11. She was an undercover policewoman no. who wouldn't tell me her name. <laughs> and number 12 was a florist who cursed in her sleep. Monkey ass. Fuck her! Ball pack, bucket of slot! <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. I know. My love life is very, very sad. Because you don't take women seriously. I do, I swear. I want it to work every time. But I don't seem to be able to get beyond six months. We have sex, we go to dinners, meet each other's friends. It's all great. Six months later, they dump me. Well, maybe you haven't met the wrong woman yet. You've read my column. I was intrigued. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in Spanish, we say your soulmate is your half orange, tu media naranja. Tu media naranja. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if Fernando came begging now, I would not take him back. Hello? Hi. Hey. I can't sleep. I've got the blues again. Okay, it's got to go for the ultimate weapon against the melancholy. No, I've already gained two kilos. What food made you happiest as a child? Snails, the ones my grandma used to cook. What? That's amazing. Me too. I got my wish. We're here today in the home of food guru, Bibiana Enriquez, 
cooking her favourite childhood dish, caca rolls. Caracoles. Or snails to you and me. So, Bibiana, what's first? Uh, I don't know, because I don't know how to cook. Uh, put the sliced garlic in the oil. I put the sliced garlic in the oil. Then I... Fill a pot with water. I fill a pot with water. And then this part I remember, because my grandmother would let me do it. I put the snails in the water. She was a wonderfully wise lady. She passed away a few years ago. But I still talk to her. Oops, looks like we got a runner. <laughs> Look at him go. Sorry, darling. Remember, folks, no animals were harmed in the making of this movie. <laughs> and once the garlic's a nice crispy black, we we add the rest of the vegetables, the onion and the tomato. You say tomato, I say tomato. What do a tomato and a potato have in common? I don't know. The both bread except the potato. What? <laughs> you can't <laughs> laugh at your own jokes, especially it's, that one. It's very good. It's rubbish. Now the crucial ingredient. Spoonful of flour. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, come Remember, on. folks, cooking's like sex. You don't need to be good at it to enjoy it. <laughs> you think that's funny? Oh, yeah. me to pick up the phone. Do you want to? Why? I need to. It's, uh, it's Oliver here. Yeah, hi. Do you want to get together, maybe? What did you have in mind? Well, whatever you like. Well, there's this conceptual art exhibit on the potato famine that I've been really wanting to see. Yeah, we could do that. Or we could do a film. What showing? Well, there's that new movie out, um, Sugar Saffron, You and Me, with what's her name? Okay. Really? Because the, uh, the, the, 
famine exhibit thing sounds good if you prefer. Let's do the film. Oh, that was brilliant. You think so? Yeah, the omelette scene was a panic. I mean, eggs are just funny. Uh-huh. You really didn't find it funny. I found the whole thing a bit painful, really. Painful? You know, just full of cliches like all these foodie rom-coms that make gluttony cool and pretend the one billion people serving in the world don't exist. <laughs> well, they don't exist in Malibu. It's just empty. Well, maybe you didn't get all the dialogue. What did I miss? Well, and there was that uh, speech about being who you want to be. No going all the way. You found that deep? Yeah. It spoke to you? Most of it, yeah. But not all of it? I don't know, maybe all of it, mostly. But you're not sure? What is this, the Spanish Inquisition? What? Why are you interrogating me? I'm not interrogating you. We disagree, that's all. You enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a load of mindless crap. That's who I am. And that's who you are. Well, it's not a war crime to have fun. You should try it sometime. I know how to have fun. And what the, what do you know about war crimes? All you do is write a ridiculous food column. Ridiculous? Thanks for letting me know what you really think. Let's just drop it. Gladly. Uh, do you want a lift somewhere? No, no, I, I, I feel like walking. In Ireland, the Great Famine was a period of mass starvation, disease and emigration between 1845 and 1852. It is also known mostly outside Ireland as the Potato Famine. In the Irish language, it is called an Gortmur, meaning the Great Hunger, or an Drukkeel, meaning the Bad Life. During the famine, approximately one million people died, and a million more emigrated from Ireland causing the island's population to fall back. Hey. Hey. Hi. Oh. Oliver. Oh. Ah. Well, what happened to your eye? <laughs> Um, oh, uh, got drunk. You sound terrible. Here. Liquor's drop. Thank you. Bibiana. I feel like an idiot for what I said outside the cinema. Mm -hmm. I know we're different, but I really don't think that what happened between us is a mistake. I... I know, before you say anything, I want you to know that I can open up my narrow little world beyond food and shite movies. From euthanasia to ethnic cleansing, famine and disaster relief, Mission Impossible, the end of torture, which the guy in the store assured me is not at all entertaining. I'm an idiot as well. I was just feeling so guilty for being happy with you. And I always give everyone a hard time, myself included. But, but I'm, I'm done with that. I want to be happy with you. And, and I like you the way you are. Right. Because the truth is, reading this stuff would have killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to go to bed. You want to come? Yeah. Table for two? Yes. yes. Is either of you pregnant or suffering from a heart condition? No. We're about to head into absolute darkness. Follow me, please. A hand on each shoulder. Somebody's like, can you feel your chills? Can you Sorry. feel your seat? No, I can't this see a thing. 
This way? Oh, sorry, sorry. No. There. This oh, yeah, yeah, okay. The back of your chair. Got I have you here. Oh. Wow. This is Richard. Let me pull it out for you. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's going on? This is really crazy. Um, exquisite. Where? Yeah. Where? In my hand. <laughs> Where? <laughs> you front of your face. Mmm. What is it? Squid. Marinated in vodka and cranberry. Mm. What a brilliant way to eat. No, I, I prefer candlelit. Oliver? O Oliver? You're, you're, you're scaring me. Um, Oliver. What <laughs> became of your lamb, Carrie? <laughs> That was very mean. Let it go. I don't like this. Oh. It's a whole day it is today. Friday. Six months since we first had sex. Really? And you haven't dumped me. Well, I've got till midnight. If you don't, I think we should move in together. What? What's, what's your expression? I can't see your face. <laughs> uh, total shock, I think. I know. It's a first for me, but I, I, I never wanted to before. And, I mean... What about you? Do you want to? Uh, see you at breakfast every morning. We'll keep the lights off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. Game set and match. That serve was out, by the way. Ah, you bollocks. Well played. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's pretty love. Christ. Is she wearing anything underneath that thing? I know how you feel. First crush I ever had. Used to go commando. Okay. Georgina Mullen, sixth class. She'd let you look under her skirt for a chalk bar. You're missing the old days, huh? How was the living together going? Great. Really great. Wake up every morning with the woman I most want to be with. It's a relief, you know? I search all that bullshit's over. I can start living a proper life. Oliver? <laughs> You're Oliver Byrne, right? Yeah, have we? I'm Georgina. Georgina Mullen from school? <laughs> I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah, I do. Jesus. That's unbelievable. You, you won't believe this. We just talked about you. No. I swear. I read your column every week. I think it's genius. Really? You've hardly changed. You neither. Well, I've breast now. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'm Simon, Oliver's single friend. Hi, Georgina. Rachel, come. We should do dinner sometime. Right. Actually, I'm attached. Who isn't? The thing is, uh, I've got a lot on my plate. Whatever. I'm going to get a chalk bar. Anyone want a chalk bar? I'd like a chalk bar. See you guys around. Chalk bar. Oh, yes. Simon called. He's very excited. Apparently, he has a date with one of the tennis players you met. With Georgina? I think he said she was called Rachel. Oh, yeah. Oh, she was nice, yeah. yeah. So who's Georgina? Oh, oh, she was just someone in my primary school. I actually <coughs> I had a crush on her, but Jesus, she's become really grotesque. Scary what the years can do, huh? You mean you don't fancy her anymore? No, God. Why'd you ask? You're using the wrong side of the crater. <laughs> I fancy you. That's why we're living together. OK, but it's OK to fancy other people, you know? Why? Who do you fancy? Lots of men. Really? Hmm. What? Uh, who, for example? Oh, Porrick. From the health food shop? What, the one who doesn't believe in deodorant? 
Galway in the 90s, chain yourself to a tree, dude. Him. You know, there's something kind of wild and intense about him. Intensely smelly. My mother called. Don't, don't, hey, don't change the subject. <laughs> you know, she seems to be really nice. Yeah, she needs to be nice to put up with the dad. How come you don't see them? We do. At weddings and funerals. I arranged to have lunch with them on Sunday. You what? I thought it'd be nice. Fine, but I'm not coming. Is that your grandmother? She passed away a few years ago. Oh, I'm sorry I never got to meet her. Oh, well, to be honest, love, it's just as well. She hated foreigners. Especially coaches. <laughs> <laughs> not eating your candle, Oliver? No, not. Never. And if you try anything, I'll call child line. <laughs> I do apologise. We are but simple folk what don't know how to saute garlic. Not good enough for the great Oliver Bourne here. That's not what it's about. Never was. Well, what's it about then? Me not being good enough for you, Dad. Bibiana's a lovely name. Thank you. And what do you do in Dublin? Um, well, right now I'm working for the Spanish Institute. I prepare cultural exhibits. Ooh. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> you don't have to eat it. I like it. <laughs> See, she's not a gay lord. <laughs> the crowd are getting very frustrated. And I can, I can see through to the players that have already done. I've never set foot inside his apartment. No way. Well, you should both come round for lunch sometime soon. Are you sure? Oh, that would be grand. <laughs> Ollie, look. Anna's given me one of her blouses. What do you think? I think it should go to charity. Oh, don't mind him. It looks lovely on you. Isn't that right, Eddie? Yeah, very nice. Uh, very nice indeed. Right. We better be making tracks. <clears throat> Well, just not stay for your tea. You can show Bibiana your room. Got a lot to do, Ma. Oh, right, so. It, it's just, we hardly ever see you. And we'd like to get to know Bibiana a bit better. Isn't that right, Eddie? Yeah. I know he'd love you to stay a bit longer. Don't we? There's one he didn't find. Are they decent? No. I thought you might like to have a look through this. Thank you. It's a pleasure, love. Hello, Ma. Oh, don't disturb you. years. No. Your parents have such an incredible bond. You can tell they really love each other. What? No, no. People like my parents never fall in love. They settle for whatever's left in the pot. I mean, you say people like my parents, you're talking about your parents, your family. That little boy thought he'd been dropped off by aliens. You are so cute. <laughs> you are so cute. Not, not the blouse. Oh, you beg me to I, take it off? I beg you. Okay. <laughs> you can't imagine how 
many times I fantasized about making love to a woman in this bed. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't easy. <laughs> I'll let a lot of Are you serious? Yeah. My rest period. Rest period? Mm hmm From the pill? Oh, my God. What? Wait. Yeah. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Wait. Oh. He will be a love child. Whoa. Whoa. <sighs> um... Wait, Jesus, what, 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 what was that about? I don't know. It was just a, a romantic impulse. Meeting your parents and, and seeing pictures of you as a kid. And I just thought it would be a happy thing. Yeah, but, you know, these things, they need, uh, they need planning, you know? Or not? I'm going out for some air. Poor service. Out. Low 15. Out. Poor service. Out. I love 30. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Eat me. I'm your chalk bar. I think maybe I should go. How is the restaurant opening? Hmm? Oh, okay. You know. Come over. I'm sad. I want to make up. Chocolate. Yeah, I ate far too much dessert. Really? Uh, Bib, listen. It's um, okay. I'm on the pill. Okay. More chocolate. Clumsy waiter. <laughs> <laughs> I should grab a shower. Uh, Oliver. Yeah? I'm sorry you picked you out at your parents' house. I shouldn't have made you feel trapped like that. I, we, we don't have to talk about children. I love you. I just want to be with you. I'm sorry, too. Can we pretend it never happened? Yes, please. What's up? 
Is there something you're not telling me? No, no. Like what? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, the matador traditionally represents the feminine. He tempts and provokes with his graceful gestures and swaying hips, wearing pink socks and pointy black shoes, whilst the bull represents the masculine, more unthinking, brutish side of nature. I could die happy with my mouth full of hammer. I'm glad to try to. No, I can't. You will? No, oh, it's imported food. High carbon footprint. And you care because? It's important to Rachel. <laughs> so what are you eating? Mainly potatoes, homegrown, of course. Oh, that's just mad. Why? What's mad? Simon's off imported food because of Rachel. High carbon footprint, you know, it's, it's very important to her. That's so nice. I never knew you were such a romantic. Uh, he's not romantic. He's a coward. Here, Rachel's not here. He'd be a coward if he lied to her. Why is she kissing you? Because I'm the good guy. She doesn't know. No, but she suspects, and that's worse. If you tell her now, she might just forgive you. That's such shite advice. You're welcome. Point is, it was a mistake. It's over. One night stands, you'll be happier never knowing about it. If you don't fess up now, she's going to start punishing you for it. It'll be like a cancer in your relationship, like a big, feckin' incurable, necrotic tumour. As long as she doesn't know anything, we're OK. But what if she does know? She just said she didn't. But I don't know. Women know things. Women know things they don't know they know. You know? Park! I don't believe it. She invited the guy from the health food shop. Hello, Park. I'm so oh. glad you could come. Listen, I think they're going to ask you to, to leave your dogs outside. You, you didn't tell me this was about bullfighting. Oh, it's a theming goyer's work. Right, you should close this down. Excuse me? Oh, come on. Bullfighting is absolutely horrific. Well, it's art. It doesn't have to be politically correct. This glorifies cruelty to animals. This is part of our culture. It's torture, not culture. They're just paintings. They should be burnt. Oh, I get it. So you're a fascist. <laughs> I'm Irish. We didn't have Franco. All right, uh, I'm Spanish. We allow gay marriages. I'm just defending animals. Yeah, listen, man, I think you better leave. No, let him. Let him. Um, what he really thinks, how we Spaniards are so backward and barbaric. Bavina, you don't think bullfighting is barbaric? I think war is barbaric. OK, time to go and have a shower. <laughs> Tort <laughs> Torture, not culture. You OK? Did you know organic chicken are slaughtered the same way as battery chicken? Yeah. They're dipped in a tank of electrified water, have their arteries slit, then they're left upside down to bleed, scalded in boiling water to remove their feathers, and after all of that, some of them are still conscious. Best is corn fed. They slaughtered them to my shed this morning. I wonder where my family is. Maybe they're taking me to them. This is sick. What are you looking at? Ah, deadmeat.info. Look, we'll be safe here. Chicken torture porn. Is that for work? Porek sent it to me. Fecker got your email. I gave it to him. You what? He came by the next day to apologize and invited me to a coffee. How nice. This rabid mongrel bites my hand off, so he buys my girlfriend a coffee. We had a really interesting conversation about... The animal kingdom. Shut up. <laughs> he, he's actually very lucid and makes you see things from a different point of view, you know? And he's a native speaker, too. So he can talk shite in two languages. Three, actually. He knows some Catalan. <laughs> I bet he does. Why are you so jealous? Uh, why am I jealous of the guy you told me is right? You're wild. No, I said there was something wild about him. 
And you don't have to worry. I would never cheat on you. He's invited me to a meeting of his group tomorrow. If you want to come. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Say hello to Bibiana and um, Gulliver. Oliver. New blood. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. OK, let's get down to business. The letter about research on pigs carried out by Dr. Atkinson at the Bowman Hospital went out to newspapers this morning. Becker. Uh, what's he researching? Cure for multiple sclerosis. Oh, right. Bastard. There are alternatives to animal testing. It's OK, Roy. I'm not trying to convert anyone here. Uh, OK, I got an email from Animal Justice. They've got rabbits looking for adoption after their fur farm raid in Normandy. Now, I've said I'll take six, which leaves three others. Puff, Brownie, and uh, Bernadette. They need a home. I think I can get two past my landlord. Yeah, great, Finn. Let's say Puff and Brownie, which leaves uh, Bernadette. I'm going to India. I can't bend down. Sorry, but my muffin gets so jealous if he sees me stroke anyone else. I'm worried he won't accept her. We'll take him. Hmm? Her. Her, her. We'll take her, B Bernadette. A rabbit. I'll take care of her. Right, right, but, um... Remember, I'm... I'm Allergic to rabbits, uh, all kinds of fur. Mm -hmm. As a child, I was never allowed a teddy bear. Oh well, can't be helped. I'll take her. Uh, other matters. The zoo is preparing its two hundredth anniversary. I think it's a great occasion to protest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those in favour? Yeah. 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 What's wrong with zoos? Voted. I can't believe you said you were allergic to teddy bears. Save the rabbit. I would have ended up cooking it. But it was so obvious you were lying. Yeah, only to you. They're from another planet. Let's atomize this doctor for trying to cure a crippling disease. No, OK. But there is a lot of animal testing that is unnecessary, and we shouldn't be spraying beauty products in their eyes. <laughs> we should be closing Dublin Zoo. You know, zoos are very cruel places. They made me really sad when I was a child. So you really want to take in Bernadette? I want to participate in something. I used to be politically active before I met you. What do I do anymore? I'm hungry. Hey! My favorite client. How are you? How's business? Oh, better now that you're here. The usual, please. I'm for the lady. I'll have a salad. Sorry, we don't do salads. OK, then I'll have a hamburger with the tomato, the onion, and the lettuce without the burger. What? Well, I'm going to try and be a vegetarian. You're joking. No. But you boil snails alive. Oh, don't remind me. It's the friend of the earth. He's made you feel embarrassed about eating meat. Of course not. Do you see the way he was devouring you with his eyes like you were a piece of cucumber? You're obsessed with him. Because he's a fanatic. You know Adolf Hitler was a vegetarian. And now you're talking like my grandfather. This is the 21st century. People eat vegetarian. He won't last a week. At least I'll have tried. You see how pale he is. You'll become anemic. You'll lose your concentration. You'll be farting all night. And say goodbye to your libido. Rabbits have lots of libido. Just eating lettuce. And Parikh said the only way it affected his sex life is that blowjobs aren't strictly vegetarian. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Maybe I won't be that strict. I don't know. We'll see. One the extra special half pounder with burger and one without. Thanks.
Mustard, ketchup? No, thank you. Tofu hitting the spot then? Mm-hmm. How about your chops? Very tender. Baby lamb? Mother pig. Do you mind if I put on some music? Not at all. <laughs> what is it? Songs from the Abattoir. Didn't this go to Eurovision? What's wrong? Um, you tasted meat. Well, I can brush my teeth. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's just take a second. No, really. Um, I'm, I'm going to take that. You can call back. No, really. Uh, kind of really turned me off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hi, Porrick. Yeah, no, no, no. Great timing. Yeah. Yeah, I did read the article. I'd love to help with the group. No, no. You're not interrupting anything. Of course not. Yeah, tell me. Felicidades. Congratulations. Thank you. Gracias. When is the happy day? Mm. December 12th. Plenty of time to change your mind. No, 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 that won't be happening, my friend. So you best pop out and buy yourself a new suit because you're best man. Worst man, depending on whose point of view. I'm so happy for you two. You two up next. Now, who ordered the entrecot very rare? That's me, thanks. And three locally sourced organic potatoes with mashed turnip. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Mmm. How's yours? Oh, it's lovely. Lovely, really. Yeah, right. Don't believe you. What's that for? Give it a break. I'm just saying the beef's locally sourced, too. They shouldn't be obliged to order veggie for your sake. Maybe they want to. Maybe they're caring people. You see these? What are these for? I'm an omnivore. And so were you before you had your brain washed by plant eater. He has a name? It's your father complex again. Are you chasing another anorgasmic hero to save the planet? Maybe, yeah, maybe. Maybe I need someone who cares about more in life than whether steak tartare is the new sushi. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's who I am. And giving up meat will be plucking one of my eyes out, missing half the beauty in the world. You know, Simon plucked his eye out for Rachel because he loves her more than a South African orange. Yeah? Mm. Do you have any idea what it's like for me to be told what I should eat? Why don't you go and see a psychiatrist? Fine. I'll ask her to look you over while we're at it. Good. You know what she'll say? What? And deep down, it's not about the animals. You're doing this because you want to punish me. For what, Oliver? What do I want to punish you for? What do I want to punish you for, Oliver? Tell me. <laughs> Tell me, I really want to know what have you done that I want to punish you for? Don't come home tonight. I'm sorry I spoiled your celebration. <sighs> Nicely done. Can I sleep on your sofa? Oh, there, there, there. Oh, oh. Don't. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Where, where, where?
Babe, I'm home. I want us to talk. Babe? Viviana? Well, 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 the living dead. Oh, Jesus, Oliver, how can you stand the smell? Oh, God, let a bit of light in here. Oh, my God. I want him back. Our tits are bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, she's a woman in bloom, you know, one of the perks. Ah, good man, you've been working. Yeah, that's good to see. You're not letting your readers down, even when you're going crazy. Should a macho serve gazpacho? <laughs> Cold soup for a hot date. That's very good. It's shite. I'm changing it to recession meals. Yeah, well, that'll go down well, won't it? There's people struggling out there. Hey, I should be trying to be... To be what? To be a depressing pain in the hole. People read you for entertainment. To forget about the feckin' misery. Can't do it anymore, man. It seems pointless. Well, you should just try and be yourself again. Yeah. We were just at Patrick Gilbo's. He sends you his lobster ravioli. Lost my appetite. You should have called my cousin. You really hurt our feelings. Did I? Christ, I'm sorry. Look, at you guys should stop trying to set me up. I'll never be happy without Viviana. You were never happy with her. It's not how I remember it. <laughs> Nostalgia is a lying bitch. She's right, Ali. It's been six months now. It's time to move on. You still got her box of tampons in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Maybe she'll forgive me and come back. <laughs> you haven't got a hope. Oh, what would you know? I know plenty. What do you know? Nothing. Just giving you my opinion. Well, you seem absolutely fucking positive. Bath's ready. What aren't you telling me? Nothing. Just go in and have a wash for yourself. Tell him. Tell me what? He's miserable enough as it is. He has to get her out of his system. Would you just tell me, Simon, I can take it? OK. OK. We were at a farmer's market and we happened to bump into her. How is she? It's good. Did you ask if she's getting my messages? Yeah. What did she say? That she hates you. Did she say anything else? She's moved in with Porik. In the biblical sense? Possibly. They're at it like rabbits. I'm sorry, man. Are you all right, Ali? Ali. Ali. Washed your clothes too, good man. Where are you going? I'm giving up meat. Tofu with Satan. Tofu with seaweed. Tofu with seaweed and Satan. This is mental. Watch her come back to me. You need to change yourself, not your diet. I am what I eat. Ah, quivering jelly? Speaks the overgrown potato from North County, Dublin. Look, I'm serious, Holly. All right, I'm not a psychiatrist around them, but. When it comes to dealing with emotions, you're, you're always running scared. You never had the balls to dump the women you didn't want to be with, so you made them dump you. And you never had the balls to keep the one woman that you wanted to be with. Because something terrifies you about the happy ever afters. 
I'm not scared of loving Bibiana. <laughs> My sacrifice will show it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I forgot your sacrifice, yeah. I bet you won't last a week. Vegetarian. You should not just pick the pepperoni off her. Yeah. Thanks. Hadn't occurred to me. Cool. 18 euros, please. Cheers. Keep the change. Hi, Bib. It's Oliver here. Uh, listen, I know you're ignoring my messages, but I just... I wanted to let you know that I've given up meat for you. Uh, it's been a month now. That's uh, 31 days, 744 hours. And I have to say, it feels great. I'm, I'm completely detoxed, a changed person. A better person. Anyway, I uh, hope you're well. Please call any time. was ready and um, I went to the bathroom and when I came back we need to call dogs from McGonnell I think it's a bit late for that son he needs to certify the death man oh. oh I think I have the number here somewhere I'll take that upstairs you wouldn't want to be seen like this
<laughs> he loved you very much, you know. <sighs> Was a stuck-up little gobshite. No, you're just like your father. Neither of you let on. Too proud to open up. But there was a lot of love in this home. I thought you stuck together out of duty. For 40 years? What do you take us for? There were things about your dad that brown me off. And vice versa. But he married me. He gave me a son. He always cared for me. Always held my hand. That's not duty. That's love, Ollie. It's what stays after the fireworks. <laughs> Alone before the doctor comes. Thanks, ma. Oh, Eddie. Do what you do. Why love? And do you think about you and babe? Do you think about you, my love? What do you think about you and babe? You broke the magic. Bibiana! Oliver? Bibiana! I need I, to talk to you. I can't now. Listen, I know. 
You hate me. I don't. But I, just, don't I don't listen. hate you anymore, hey, Oliver. We don't just, want any aggro. This is a peaceful demo. All right. No, we're, we're fine, man. Just, just give us a moment here, please. What do you want from her? None of your monkey business. Oliver, she's with me now. And things are cool, yeah? Oh, yeah. Because this isn't the jungle, man. We don't snatch each other's females just because we have more facial hair. You know why she left you? Maybe because your arse emits more pheromones than mine. Both of you, can you stop this? Yeah, come on, go home, will you? Why? I love her more than you do. Come on, take me on. Let's see who gets to mate with her, hmm? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh,
Hi, Ma. Hey, Da. Hey, so. Well, <laughs> the. How are you? Good. Good? Yeah. Yeah. What have you been up to? I have nothing really. Cherry liqueur. Mm. Mm. What's yours? White truffle. Come on. Mm. Oh. Why'd you do that? Fair like another poem. Yeah, but now I can eat your queen. Cappuccino. Coconut. Mmm. Oh. You're supposed to try and win. <laughs> I'll finish all the chocolate. Good rule for life. Wish I learned it earlier. So I overheard Mum say that she had better sex with Michael than she ever had with you. I'm glad that my ten-year-old son is privy to such information. I asked her why he's got married. What did she say? Terrible on the rebound. Then she got pregnant and you decided to go for her. We're very glad we did. Best thing that ever happened to us. Who are we on the rebound from? A Spanish woman. There's a sex better with her than with Ma. Eddie, you're ten years old. You should be thinking about horror movies and violent video games. Hello. Would you like a chocolate? You shouldn't take a chocolate from strangers. He could be a pervert. It's okay, I'm not a pervert. That's what a pervert would say. What's a pervert? A man you don't know who gives you chocolate. Don't you listen to him. I'm his da. I don't have a da. How come? It's just my ma and me. I get arrested, my bail's coming out of your pocket money. So are you still in love with the Spanish woman? It was ten years ago. So? She moved to Africa. Why don't we go there to find her? <laughs> she went with a hairy guy called Porrick. Maybe he's been eaten by a lion. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they split up and she'd be happy to see. Life's not like that. Check. What? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, bye. What's that? Mmm. The curse. Who gave it to you? The waiter? No, the pervert. Who told you that word? The boy. What boy? The boy with the pervert. What pervert? His dad. What da where? Yeah.